Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to part two of our edge switch setup. So let's get right into it. If you remember in the last video, we enabled SSH and also SSL. And we're going to go ahead and log in with our non-UBNT user that we created in the last video. Once our interface loads, we'll have a little bit of information. You'll also remember we put the system name, the system location, and the contact in. Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to put a we're going to put a static IP address on, and then we're going to talk about VLANs. So that's the the purpose of tonight's video. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open a command prompt and we're going to ping 192.168.66.6 and I thought that one was probably in the free and clear so we're going to go to system connectivity IP version 4 and right here you can see under network configuration protocol it is set to DHCP so what we're going to do is we're going to click none and it says changing protocol mode will reset IP configuration. Perfect. That's what we want. We're going to click OK. We're going to come over here put in uh, uh, dot six. We only have to backspace part of that because it will autofill whatever your DHCP address was. So our subnet mask and our gateway are correct and then um, when we start doing VLAN routing and things like that we'll talk about this management VLAN ID and about how that that's all going to work so right now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and submit this and what should happen is we should kind of lose communication with it because it's no longer on 49 and the switch actually unlike the AeroS devices the edge max device doesn't redirect you to the new IP so we're going to take that out. We're going to put six in. And you're going to see we're going to be prompted with our interface. Now, if we were to reboot this switch at this point, we would lose this IP address change and we'd go back to DHCP because we haven't saved the configuration yet. So you're going to want to make sure that you save that configuration. I'll tell you what, and I don't know how many of you have upgraded a 1.7 dot one but I think it is a lot snappier than the other releases and maybe it's just the placebo effect I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure so let's take a look at VLANs and how the edge switch handles VLANs versus how Unify handles VLANs and we are going to tackle all of the different VLANs tonight we're gonna to start with just kind of a basic VLAN primer. You will notice uh, if you were on some of the older releases that there are some new things like the Mac based VLAN. Private VLAN is not new, voice VLAN is not new, but we'll talk about how to use those. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to go into VLAN. The very first tab that comes up under VLAN is Wizard. And from here, oh, you can see that I've, I actually already have, that's funny, I actually already have some VLANs in here. I must have been working with somebody. So I'm just going to delete these real quick. And then we'll talk about this. Now, they, they do have a trunk port wizard, but we can manually also uh, emulate the settings that a, that a trunk port uses. Now what I like about the edge switch versus the Unify switch is that on an edge switch, not every port is a trunk port by default. Effectively, with a Unify switch in its current, uh, current release, everything is, or every switch port is, is a trunk port. It tags everything except for the native, unless you go in and you change that setup. The edge switch does it what I would consider to be in a more traditional fashion where it does not do that. You have the 
the untagged VLAN that's your default VLAN and then everything else you have to tell it how to participate or work with a port. I also like that you can change the names. You can't change the name for VLAN 1. It's stuck on default. I don't know if we could change that through the command prompt or not. I don't know. Maybe we'll experiment with that. But here, if we want to create five VLANs, we could do uh, two through five and click add. Or we could do two, three, four, five. It'll work either way. And to give you uh, an idea of that, let's do this. Two through five and then six through ten. Let's see if that works. So we'll click add. So you can see that that worked and then we'll do and we're not going to use all these VLANs in our training but I just want to see if this works. So we'll do 11, 12, 13 and then we'll do we'll skip we'll go 18 through 21 so now we're using both both ways that you can group VLANs so let's see what happens I'm, I'm betting that it's gonna recognize it I mean so we're only displaying 10 rows we'll display all and we'll see what we have here so Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, play around with that. 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 That's interesting. So I'm going to delete everything but two and three, and of course the default. So we've highlighted those. We'll click remove. And we will name these. So VLAN 2 is going to be our voice VLAN, and VLAN 3 will be our video VLAN. Go ahead and submit that. And then we'll save it. Yes, we want to save. All right, so what I was talking about, so you've got your default VLAN on all of the ports as untagged and then if you look when we first created all of these VLANs these are exempted except they're tagged here because port 26 is set as a trunk port so what a trunk port does is it just tags the VLAN so, and then you have the default VLAN as untagged. So we could turn this off. And we could actually, we could exempt VLAN 2 from the trunk. So if you wanted to isolate VLAN 2 traffic just to this switch, you would do that. You wouldn't allow it to flow through any of the uplinks to any other switches or to a router and you would isolate that VLAN because now there's nothing to route that traffic. We're not going to do that but it's important that you know that. I don't think we have any changes there. So if we go over to the status tab there's just kind of gives us a little bit more information. We can click on one of these VLANs, click edit, and we're going to see the voice, the type, convert VLAN to type static. It's already a static. And then VLAN routing. So now you're looking at that and you're going, hmm. So yes, when we start doing VLAN routing, we're going to come in here and we're going to click this radial button. That will enable VLAN routing. There's another place we have to enable routing on the switch. 
overall, we have to enable IP routing. We're not going to do that tonight. I know you're itching to get to that, but let's build up to that so we understand what the VLANs are and, and how that works. So now we can come over here to port configuration. Now, what should happen when you're using this wizard? And what I say should is because I've seen it not happen this way. What should happen is if, here's an example. We're going to use port 6 as an example because I don't think I've got anything, yeah, I don't have anything plugged into port 6. So we're going to exempt the default VLAN. We are going to make voice the untagged VLAN. So now that port is a member of that VLAN. So we're going to submit this. And what I've seen happen before is that this wizard didn't communicate those changes properly, and so nothing worked. Everything was still in the default VLAN. So now we'll go over here to port configuration, and if we go to 6, all right, so up here is our VLAN number, right? 6, VLAN 1 is excluded. It's excluded uh, from participating. So now if we go to VLAN 2, port 6, 2 is included, it's, in, it's participating, and it is untagged. So let's go over here. So this untagged VLAN, for the port to work properly, so when I plug a machine into that, into that port, for it to communicate properly on that network, layer 2 and layer 3, the port VLAN ID and the untagged VLAN ID have to be VLAN number 2. Unless whatever I'm plugging in there is tagging. When we're talking about just plugging in a workstation that's not doing tagging, if I want something on VLAN 2 and I want it to get proper IP addressing and proper communication, the port VLAN ID and the untagged VLAN ID have to be two. But back on port configuration, what I like to do is come in here and I like to document, document, document. And as you can see that's not there. What where we want to add the uh, let's see system basic port summary. Come in here to port six and edit this. And we can do a couple things here. And say this is Willie's test port. And if you're if you want to physically shut the port off, which is a good security practice, the admin mode, if we click disable, is actually going to turn that port off. We can change our our speed and duplex. Uh, I suggest you leave that on auto negotiate unless a vendor for some reason tells you not to. Our spanning tree mode, our link aggregation mode, our link trap flow control, our frame size. So if you needed to do jumbo frames, this is where you would configure that. And then all about our storm recovery levels here. So I am actually not going to disable that port, but I am going to call that Willie's test port. Oh. It did not like the uh, apostrophe in Willie's test port. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And that's where we're going to wrap this video for now. And then when we come back, we're going to get into some of the other stuff with uh, VLANs, lags, port mirroring, things like that. Um, and there is one other screen that we are going to talk about. I'm going to go to it in case I don't get it all clipped out where I was talking about it a minute ago, but it's a switch port summary screen. So we'll get into this next time too. So that's where we're at tonight. Get in there, play around with your VLANs, uh, do the tagging, untagging, you know, set natives on a port and uh, really play with it and break it. You know, this is why we have a lab, figure out how these things work. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. 
If you'd like to get your very own edge switch, I'm going to put those Amazon affiliate links down there in the description. It doesn't change your price, but it keeps a few bucks rolling in so we can keep doing these videos. I appreciate everyone being here, and we'll see you in the next video.